The Nine Tails is one of the strongest beings in the Naruto universe. Definitely the strongest tail beast, except for the Ten Tails and a force of nature in of itself. Throughout the ages, several shinobi have tried to tame the Nine Tails, either by controlling it or by becoming Jinchurikis, imprisoning the tail beast inside of somebody's body so that that person could access the chakra of the creature. So today we're going to be ranking every single master of the Nine Tails, either the Jinjurikis or the people who controlled it, to determine who was the best at using the massive power of the Tail Beast to bolster their strength and become more powerful during fights. Starting off with number seven, and this the first of May, actually be very surprising. It's going to be Hashirama Senju. Now Hashirama has absolute control over the Nine Tails. After he takes it from moderate, you can take a look at how Hashirama just grabbed the Nine Tails with his Buddha statue. And the Nine Tails looks like a small pet being grabbed by the statue's hand. It's absolutely insane. Hashirama has no problem whatsoever taming the Nine Tails. As a matter of fact, his wood style and Senju Chakra seem to be a perfect counter for the Nine Tails, allowing Hashirama to suppress a tail beast without much of an issue. But the thing is that for this particular list, well, Hashirama doesn't really do anything with the Nine Tailies. While he has it under his command, at least as far as we know and lore-wise, this is very much supported. Hashirama never used Kurama to fight any wars or fight any opponents first because he probably doesn't even have any means to do so. He can suppress the Nine Tails as Chakra, but he cannot use the Tail Beast like Madara could, controlling with the Genjutsu, for example. So, the reason why Hashirama kept the Nine Tails, obviously to maintain the security of the world and land of fire because the Nine Tails is an extremely dangerous being, especially when it's angry, when Madara controls for years, making it do its bidding. And then the Nine Tails want to lash out against anybody that it sees. Also, Hashirama was kind of dumb when he just delivered every single tail beast he had access to for free to the other villagers trying to acquire peace by doing that. It really backfired. Hashirama, that wasn't the greatest idea, but at least he kept the Nine Tails in the Leaf Village, which in hindsight was a good idea at least. I mean, the Nine Tails is far more powerful than every single other tailed beast. It's even more powerful than all the others combined. So, having the Nintiles was at least better than nothing at all. Ashirama, the god of Shinobi, the guy who could pick the Nine Tails very easily with his Buddha statue, acknowledged that the Nine Tails' power was very dangerous and he had to keep it under control. And that's why he decided to seal it in his wife, Mito Uzumaki, and that's the strange thing. The Leaf Village seems to be the only major village that doesn't try to use its tail beasts as a weapon during wars. Ashirama certainly doesn't try to use it. We don't get any information about Mito Uzumaki using the Nine Tails ever. And then we also get the confirmation in the Minato spin-off manga that Kushina is not being used in the Third Great Ninja War. And Minato is actually trying to win the war quick so that they don't have to resort to that. So it's very strange that everybody else is using their tail beasts to the best of their abilities during wars. We see in the Minato spin-off manga that the Stone Village, well, they are sending the four and the five tails to the battlefield. And they were aiming Bijudamas at Minato and Jiraiya. The reason may actually be because the first Jinchuriki was the first Hokage's wife. And Hashirama may not want his wife to go to war and be used as a tool. So it's very possible that he just introduced a policy to keep the Nine Tails safe inside the Leaf Village. Not use it as a weapon so that it doesn't fall in the enemy's hands, which would be very detrimental and would also protect his wife and the future Jinchuri. Hashirama is a very compassionate guy. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't want people to be used as tools, especially after seeing the horrors of war during the Warring States period. Number six on this list, Mito Uzumaki, the wife of Hashirama. She was the first Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails, at least that we have confirmation of. Maybe before the age of Shinobi, there was another Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. And then the Nine Tails may have escaped the Shinchuriki, but we just don't know about that. We don't even know how long before the age of Shinobi, the Nine Tails was built by Hagoromo. So this is pure speculation. It's very safe to assume that Mito was most likely the first Jinchuriki to host the Nine Tails. Especially because it is said that before the age of Shinobi, the tail beasts were free to roam the world. It's with the start of the age of Shinobi and the village system that the tail beasts already used as weapons. And it's very interesting thematically as well because the Shinobi system causes so many problems for the characters in the world. It causes so much disgrace. And the same thing applies to the tail beasts themselves. They were free prior to the Shinobi system, but now they are prisoners forced to lend their powers so that the humans can kill each other in their wars. Still, we just don't have confirmation that Mito Uzumaki uses the Nine Tails in any capacity. Now, there probably are some incidents where the Nine Tails chakra would leak out of her body because that seems to be the case whenever a Jinchirik of the Nine Tails has a very emotionally charged moment. But because we don't have any confirmation of it, that she should ever use the Nine Tails chakra in any capacity, I'm putting her second to last on this list. 
And I'm actually putting her in front of Hashirama because it's easier for you to control and use the chakra of a tailed beast when you are the Jinshiriki. And this is very much explained throughout the entire series. So if Mita wanted to access the Nine Tails Chakra, it would be easier for her than for Hashirama when he just had control over the tail beast. But the only thing he could do was to suppress the chakra of the creature and not really use it as a weapon. And being a Jinchiriki, albeit an imperfect one, still allows you to access the chakra of the beast. We see that when Madara and Obito are controlling the Tentails, for example, during the war arc, they're just using it as a tool. They are not the Jinchuriki at first, of course. They're linking their Hashirama cells into the Tentails to get a better grasp of the creature. But when it starts to evolve further and further, Mara says, well, we're going to have to become Jinjiriki of this thing eventually because we're not going to be able to control it anymore. So it's obvious that being a Jinjiriki grants you better access to the beast powers unless you can just control it perfectly, which a couple of people can do to the Nine Tails. But the Ten Tails was just something different. But because she is a Jinjiriki, she gets number six in front of Hashiran because she can at least use it as a weapon and not just suppress the chakra. Moving on to number five, we have Kushina Uzumaki, the second Jinjiriki of the Nine Tails. Now, as I said before, Kushina was not used as an extensive weapon of war using the power of the Nine Tails. As a matter of fact, it's very clear that Kushina tried to avoid the Nine Tails as much as she could. But with the Minato spin-off, we actually get some very interesting new pieces of information about Kushina's relationship with the Nine Tails. Here we see that the Nine Tails kind of torments her every day. She wakes up having a nightmare because the Nine Tails is taunting Kushina. And it seems like the Nine Tails is constantly trying to take over Kushina's body. We don't know if this was the case with Mito, because we just don't have that much information. But it certainly wasn't the case with Naruto, because the Nine Tails only starts to tempt Naruto when he hits rock bottom. Man. For instance, in the Tenchi Bridge arc, when Naruto goes crazy against Rochimaru, because Orochimaru is taunting Naruto about Sasuke. And then in the Pain arc, when Naruto's lost everything, essentially, and he's just given in to the power of the Nine Tails. Those were the two main moments. The Nine Tails was taunting Naruto, trying to take over his body. But for Kushina, I mean, she just wakes up in a normal day and the Nine Tails is trying to get her body. But I put Kushina on number five here because she actually uses the Nine Tails chakra. In the Minato manga, the chakra begins to leak out when she realizes Minato's doing everything to protect her. And her love for Minato is what actually prompts the seal to weaken. And then the chakra leaks. Now first, Kushina slaps Minato with Ninetales' tail in the normal version 1 cloak, but then she goes version 2, and the chakra takes a hold of her body, and then she just pierces Minato with her hand, and that's very gruesome. Luckily, Kushina and Minato are able to contain the Nine Tails using their powers in combination. I mean, Kushina uses her chains, and Minato uses his Rasengan, and this is all happening inside of Kushina's consciousness, just like in Naruto's. But now Minato's helping her out here, but she's gonna go a little bit higher than Mito because, well, at least she tapped into the Nine Tails Chakra. Even though she had no control over it, she was able to eventually subdue the Tail Beast. And theoretically, if she wanted to, in an emergency, if the village was being attacked or if people were trying to kill somebody that she loves, she could just go ballistic. Willingly let the Nine Tails wreak some havoc as a last resort, just like Naruto did a couple of times. So that's why Kushina goes here in number five. At least she can use the power somehow. And she also has a semi-reliable way to control the chakra when she is done. So yeah, she goes here. Perhaps she needed more training, but she never got that. I don't think it's something she really wanted to pursue, but still. Number four is going to be Kinkaku and Ginkaku. Now these guys have never controlled the Nine Tails, and they were never Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. Well, they were never real Jinchuriki, but they were pseudo Jinchuriki. Long ago, Kinkaku and Ginkaku, with the help of the Cloud Village, tried to tame the Nine Tails even before Madara started to tame it with his Sheringan. Kinkaku and Ginkaku tried several things to control the Tail Beast, to harness its power. But they weren't really able to do much. And eventually the Nine Tails just swallowed the two of them. Now, obviously everybody thought they were just dead. I mean, how can they survive being swallowed by the Nine Tails? But they were pretty tough. They ate the Nine Tails' stomach flesh to maintain themselves alive for a long period of time. And the Nine Tails eventually had to regurgitate them because they just couldn't handle them anymore. And because they ate so much of the Nine Tails meat, they got Nine Tails Chakra. They became pseudo Jinchuriki. They didn't hold the entire tail beast in their bodies, just like Naruto, Mito, and Kushina did. But they had latent chakra of the Nine Tails that they could access. Kind of like a Jinchuriki. Which is pretty insane. And it wasn't just something they would use once and run out of it, which you may think would be the case, right? Well, you eat the Nine Tails meat, you gain some additional chakra, but then when you use that particular chakra, it's just going away because it came with the meat you ate. 
But apparently somehow their bodies were able to contain that chakra and even regenerate that, meaning that they could use a pseudo Jinchuriki version 2 mantle several different times. The Raika guy even speculates when he is explaining about the Kinkaku and Kinkaku brothers that they may be descendants of the Sage of Six Baths because other people simply weren't able to do such a thing. The Cloud Village tried to feed pieces of the Eight Tails meat to their ninjas, but nobody survived. Kinkaku and Ginkaku were the only ones who could do something like that, and they ate the Nine Tails meat, which is even more powerful than the Eight Tails. And the fact that the chakra is not a consumable item, quote unquote, it doesn't just go away after you consume it is pretty crazy to me. Like they just regenerate the Nine Tails chakra somehow. That piece of the Nine Tails got imbued into them forever. Even their Edotensei form had access to the Nine Tails' chakra, which is very insane. So, yeah. It makes some sense that Kinkaku and Ginkaku are able to use the Nine Tails chakra in their Edo Tensei form. And the chakra keeps on regenerating regardless of the not being true Jinchuriki. And even though they are not true Jinchuriki, they can still use the power of the Nine Tails pretty well. As I said, they had a version to cloak and they retained their consciousness throughout the process very well. Just like B did whenever he went version 2, Kinkaku could still speak in that state, which is not something you would be able to usually do unless if you were a perfect Jinchuriki like B is now. Of course, he's not as powerful as version 2 Naruto. Next is Obito Uchiha. Now, Obito doesn't control the Nine Tails for that long. He just invades the Leaf Village, gets Kushina after she just gave birth to Naruto, and uses the weakened state of her seal to extract the Nine Tails from her. And then he puts the Nine Tails under a Genjutsu, controlling it. He then summons the Nine Tails in the middle of the Leaf Village and goes to fight Minato. So, like he's controlling the Nine Tails, making it fight the entire village while he is fighting the fourth Hokagai, the strongest ninja of his time. That's pretty impressive. Let's be real. We don't know exactly how much control he exerts over the Nine Tails when he's actually fighting against Minato in that situation. Maybe he's just like putting the Nine Tails in autopilot and saying, yeah, just fight the village for me. I'll deal with Minato and then we go back to it later. But we see that when Minato shows up after he summons the Nine Tails, he notices Minato standing on top of his Hokage head. And then he just literally aims at Bijudama, at Minato trying to kill him. But that Bijudama was just a distraction because Obito sneaks behind Minato and then he almost catches him in his Kamui. Now, eventually Minato takes the Nine Tails out of Obito's control, tagging him with a release seal. But while he was doing it, Obito was pretty proficient in controlling the Nine Tails with his Sheringan. Now, we don't see Obito fighting in conjunction with the Nine Tails. The Nine Tails is fighting separately from him during the attack, so we don't know exactly how proficient he is at controlling the Nine Tails. Maybe he's not so precise. Maybe he doesn't have that much experience controlling a tail beast, but we see that he could at least aim at Bijudama wherever he wants to. And the benefit of this particular situation is that Obito literally gets to control 100% of Kurama's chakra. Here. The others on this list so far, they couldn't do that. Hashirama had the entire Nine Tails for him, but he couldn't even use it. And the other Jinchuriki, as well as Ginkaku and Kinkaku, they just had access to section of the chakra. If Mito and Kushina used the entire Nine Tails chakra, they would just be consumed by the tail beast and die. But Obito, he just Genjutsu's Nine Tails and uses it on his own volition. The entire thing, which is really powerful. On to the number two, Madara Uchiha. Madara is known for in the entire Shinobi world is that he was able to tame the Nine Tails with his Sharingan and use it against the first Hokagai. This is one of the lore aspects of the Naruto series that's thrown around a lot. A lot of people mention this. Oh, Madara was able to tame the Nine Tails, the Sharingan. It tames the Nine Tails when you master it completely and you can get so much power from it. And it's one of those legendary things that people are just very hyped about in universe. Like, okay, this Madara guy, he was insane. He could just control the Nine Tails, the most powerful beast in the planet. But then you may be saying, well, Obito just did the exact same thing in number three. Why is Madara number two? Like, why is Obito here? Because, well, Madara does a bit more stuff with the Nine Tails than Obito did. Of course, we only saw one particular occasion of Madara using the Nine Tails but it is implied that he had the Nine Tails under his control for much longer than just one fight. I mean, every time Madara and the Nine Tails were on screen at the same time, the Nine Tails was cursing at Madara. Kurama even lended its power to Naruto, and Madara used his wood style so that Naruto could counter Madara just because it hated Madara so much. And that was before Naruto befriended Kurama, because yeah, Madara completely mastered his use of the Nine Tails. He was absolutely insane with it we saw Madara actually fighting in conjunction with the Nine Tails. Now, 
Of course, he was controlling it completely like a puppet, but he was effective at it. He was able to combat Hashirama's wood golem shooting Bijudamus. He was also tanking attacks with his Susano whenever Hashirama redirected his Bijudama against the Nine Tails. But the most impressive and clever thing Madara has done with the Nine Tails was to coat it with his perfect Susano, creating the majestic attire Susano. Like, how cool is that? When I first saw Madara using his Susano as a literal suit of armor for the Nine Tails, I almost lost it. It was one of the coolest things in the Naruto series, and it just makes sense, right? The Susano is technically a massive hollow suit of armor, so just use it around the Nine Tails, and then you get the Nine Tails plus a perfect Susano. Like, how can you get better than this? You can control the Nine Tails and Susano at the same time, so there is no problem whatsoever. Number one is Naruto Uzumaki. I don't think this is very surprising to anyone, but I figured that the main character, who so happens to be the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails in the series, gets to be the best at controlling its power and using it in fight. Now, obviously, it took Naruto a long time to even master a bit of the Nine Tails chakra. He was able to tap into it in the Chunin exams with some degree of confidence that he wouldn't go absolutely ballistic by just going to the Nine Tails and asking for some chakra. Jiraiya taught him that. But then they figured this wasn't exactly the best way to go about it because the Nine Tails was weakening Naruto's seal very slowly by giving him more and more chakra. And the Nine Tails chakra itself was very harmful to Naruto. So he just stopped asking for the Nine Tails chakra in Naruto Shippuden. Of course, Naruto went ballistic a couple of times against Orochimaru and then against Pain, but he wasn't really controlling anything in that state. Madara would still completely outclass him in terms of using the Nine Tails here. Even when he mastered KCM1, he is still not nearly as powerful as Valley of the End Madara. But KCM1 is already a massive step towards mastering the Nine Tails completely. Nato became very fast. He was able to rival the Raikage in speed. He was also able to use the Nine Tails, his chakra, to extend his limbs and attack people using his Rasengan and Rasen Shuriken in very cool and different ways. But obviously Naruto becomes the best at using the Nine Tails when he befriends the Nine Tails during the fight against Obito. When he unleashes five tailed beasts against Kakashi and Gai, Naruto and Kurama finally form their bond of friendship. And Naruto, for the first time, uses the Kyubi Chakra Avatar mode which is a much more efficient mode than just turning into the tail beast completely like B usually does. Because just with a QB Chakra avatar, Naruto can leap in and out of that massive state whenever it's favorable for him. He can use his normal jutsus in smaller sizes when he is in that state as well. He can create shadow clones from inside the Nine Tails, something he wouldn't be able to do if he just transformed into the real form of the Nine Tails. He also gained the ability to create Bidudama and shoot them very well. He could do them both as his smaller normal form, just with a KCM2 mantle or in the Kurama avatar mode. And he could also create gigantic Rasengans and Ross and Shurikens with his Kurama avatar. Also, because Naruto and Kurama had a bond of friendship, they could actually help each other. Because when Madara was controlling the Nine Tails, he wasn't getting help from it. He was just using it as a tool. But when Naruto gets the Nine Tails friendship here, then it's almost always a two versus one or two versus whatever many opponents they're facing. So Naruto is extremely versatile with the Nine Tails, especially obviously in the war arc, and they can do so much stuff together on top of being extremely powerful, like this video. If you enjoyed it, to help me out by smashing that subscribe button, it really does help. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. Watch this other video if you're interested in more Naruto content. And thank you so much for watching VerseTube.